Hello, this is G with G Papetry, and today I will be doing a flip through of both of my planners here, as well as sharing with you the reasons why I've been using two planners side by side for the past two years. Both of these are from Kiki K, and this is an A5 size, and this is a personal size. And the general idea of having two planners is that one is for on the go, and then the other one is for at home or um, in the office or home slash office if you work out of the house. So let's get started on the personal size planner here. I do carry it on the go, like I mentioned, so I do utilize it as a wallet as well. So you will see little wallet tidbits throughout this planner. This first section here is the monthly view, and I find that it's really important to always have your monthly view with you. And that is because the monthly calendar holds all of your major events, such as birthdays, celebrations, weddings, as well as your appointments and any major holidays that you want to remember. Having this with you is very convenient if you're at the doctor's office and they want to know if you can make an appointment for the future. You can just flip to that and see if there's any conflicting appointments. This next section is the weekly view and everything that I put into the weekly view has to do with reminders about errands or reminders if I'm out and about. That way I don't miss anything. Like for example, if I'm running errands on Tuesday, then I know that I have to pick up my son at a certain time. I have to go to um, the clinic at a certain time and that I have a um, delivery schedule that day as well. And it lets me know if it's a, like if it's an important package that I'm expecting, then I do want to make sure that somebody is there to retrieve the package or if it's okay if it just stays there. That just gives me a conscious of when I'm expecting a delivery and whether or not I need to be there before I start running my errands. This next section here is my notes section and the kind of notes I put in here have to do with um, any of my major idea brainstorming for that month. So. I keep a few pages of relevant notes in here and if I'm sitting at the doctor's office being um, just being bored for 15-20 minutes while I wait for the doctor, I can just flip to this section and make the most of my time there. That way I'm just not bored out of my mind. I can be productive. And this next section, I call it my doodles section, but really it's my anything goes section. This last page here is just a set of sticky notes and this is if somebody says, hey, you know, I have a tentative um, date for an event, but I'm not really sure when it's going to be, but most likely, let's say it's just going to be around June 15th, then I would write that event on my sticky note, stick it in my uh, monthly view calendar over here and then if it happens to move then I could just move it around with ease without having to scribble all over my pages. Oh and I forgot to show you but right here at the very end and I make sure that it's at the very end. It's my shopping list that way if my boys tell me that hey mom we're out of eggs or milk I can just write it all down here on this list so that when I go out shopping I can have this list ready and I won't miss anything. As I mentioned before, I do carry my wallet items in here. So I have my cards in here. I cover them all because they have private information. But I keep it in these little um, kind of like plastic sleeves for t name tags or badges. And I just three hole punch them so that they can fit into my rings. And I do this so that I can remove sections out that I don't want to carry with me. Like for example, these are my credit cards. If I know I want to make sure I don't feel tempted to use them, if I go to let's say Michael's or Hobby Lobby, then I take this section out. This right here is a pocket folder that I got from Michael's. It's for their recollections zip around planner but it fits right into this personal size even though it's a little bit taller it still fits and I find that this is a perfect size for cash and for receipts and then this little pouch right here is just a zipper pouch that I keep loose change in 
And then at the very back here, I just have a dashboard that I throw in here so that it can act as a sturdy support surface back here. And I don't generally put anything in here other than my Samsung Galaxy uh, phone. And because I don't use a case around my phone, I know that's really bad. I do have a protective screen, but I don't use a case for it. Then I just stick it in here and it slips right in. And sometimes I will take one of my purse straps and hook it onto the rings, close it up and carry this like a purse. If I don't put it in my purse, then I carry it like a purse. So basically this is my on the go planner. And then Next is the A5 size planner here. And this one is a lot bigger because I need it to hold more information, more details. This first section here is, it was my monthly planning pages, but I no longer use my monthly, uh, my monthly planning pages um, as of this year. And that's because if I'm planning, then I refer to these monthly planning pages. So basically, I do have to archive this whole section out. And then next here is the weekly view. And I just did a mock-up of one of my weekly views. This is not my actual weekly pages that I've been using because it just has too many personal information. So I just did a mock-up just so you can see how it looks like. And with this weekly view, what I have here are my to-do lists and my um, daily schedules, as well as my habits and chores and a shopping list. Now you may wonder, why do I have two shopping lists? And that's because anything that's on the go, I know that I'm gonna need if I'm at the stores, it's in this planner. Anything that I buy online or that I know I will end up buying online, I put it in this one. That way when I sit down to do my budgets and stuff, I can just glance at this and say, you know, I need a make a purchase, or if I'm doing my um, tasks, then I may say, oh, you know what? I have like another 20 minutes. Let me just put together some orders. Um, here, I just track my vitamin intake, water intake, birth control pills. Over here, I color code them. I don't always color code them, um, but I do when it becomes kind of cumbersome here. But everything that has to do with business, I try to keep on this right hand side and if everything that has to do with personal um, tasks I keep on the left hand side but I do color code it that way I can block off time for those certain tasks and sometimes I will also prioritize it like let's say I have to submit this ATAP report as my first priority I'll put number one there and then maybe a number two on brand packaging and then number three to submit a wholesale order to one of my wholesalers so um, I can prioritize if I need to and I can color code it if I need to check it off when it's all done and um, over here is a note section and over here is just a grid section that way if I'm happening to listen to a broad cast or some sort of podcast I could just flip to these sections to write down a quote if I um, hear something that I want to remember and then on the very back here you do see that I have this polka dot binder clip here and this just marks the section that I flip to all the time if I need to refer to my passwords I don't recommend you carrying your passwords with you that's kind of scary because whoever gets a hold of your planner has your entire life routine in their hands as well as your passwords and that's um, a scary thought so I keep this planner at home and I don't worry about my passwords being misplaced when I'm out and about so basically that's um, my planning system one is for at home for business and uh, to run the home and uh, the other ones might on the go so you may be wondering if it's more difficult to plan with two planners. I mean, sometimes planning with one planner, you um, find that it's overwhelming enough. But um, the simple answer regarding planning with two planners is that it's not any more difficult than planning with one planner. And that's because everything that I am planning for the home just simply goes in here. And everything that I am planning for errands just simply goes in the smaller one. So it's just like if I were to plan with this planner, which I was using in 2015, I believe. And let's just say, let's just 
turn to one of these weeks. You can see that I have three sections here. So let's just say that this bottom section is my errand running section. What I would do is just take this section and put it in the separate planner. And then all these other details, I'll put it in this planner. And then I would just take my monthly view and stick it in this one planner so that I'm not duplicating anything really. I'm just separating it so that I could take a piece of my planner with me and leave the rest at home that I don't really wanna take with me or that I don't necessarily have to lug around with me everywhere I go. So just a quick scenario of how I would plan uh, with two planners is, let's just say I'm planning in the month of October, okay? Let's say that it's October now. And let's say I'm planning for week number 41. So I would just turn to week number 41 within my weekly pages, 41, okay? And every time I do my weekly spread, I always refer back to my monthly spread. If you've watched my other um, planning video, um, I will link it below, but if you've watched my other planning video, you would see how I always refer back to the monthly calendar. That way I don't miss anything important. So here from the 9th through the 14th, you can see that there's Columbus Day. So I'm going to mark that, there, um, that it's a holiday and that the post office is closed that day. That way I don't promise any orders that day. And then on the 13th, that's just my little marking that it's my husband's payday. So I would make a note here that I will have to um, sit at the desk and reconcile my checking account and just make sure all the bills are paid. And then on the 15th, it's my little code that the youth group has an event. So I would have to um, mark down here that I have a youth event that day and that I would have to prep for it in advance on the Saturday, the day before. And if I have any appointments, let's say that I have written down here an appointment for um, 9.15 on the 11th, then I would just go to the number nine, put colon 15, and write that I have an appointment with whoever that day. So basically, that's how I would just plan. Um, I would just transfer any to-dos that were not checked off and transfer it to my new week transfer all of the habits and chores or whatever I want to track that week and um, take my to-dos, block off time, distribute the to-dos, and then fill in the blanks for the rest. So yeah, basically it's the same way that you would plan. It's just that you piece it apart where you know there's a piece that you want to take with you and a piece that you want to keep at home. So you may be wondering if I still decorate in my planners. And I do, however, it's not... Uh, planning and decorating at the same time. I do something that's a little bit different that will also satisfy my need for that creativity or me time or play with stickers time. I know I'm nearing my 40s, but I still play with stickers. My husband laughs at me, but it's the truth. I won't deny it, um, but I will share that in another video in case it's something that would help you. Like if you know you just want to keep your plans as your plans, but you do want to have the outlet to be creative, then you can also do that. And um, I have two different ways that I do that. So I will share that if you guys are interested. But if you have any questions regarding uh, planning with two planners, then let me know and I will see you guys next time. Bye.